Alright guys, this is Jabberwock and I'm bringing you the other side of Group A of the KSL, Aspen Hall Open, or AHO, and we're going to do Multiplier of 4 here. <clears throat> Looks like we have at the bottom left, K Dags, eh, not Dolbs, <laughs> and at the top right we have China, and not Jabberwock, me. So anyways, these guys were using our computers and so that's why the names are all screwed up. However, it looks like uh, these players are not, these are new players to StarCraft pretty much, and so, you know, give them a break, it's not a big deal if they do weird build orders or anything. Don't, you know, set their rally points, it's a bunch of stuff. Spawning pool down for China and uh, Barracks, and two, two racks, double racks, going down for K Digs. They are already morphing, he has an extractor. Also building a Roach Warren as well. And Marine's now coming out for K-Dag. So, I mean, if K-Dag's moved out right now, he would definitely win the game because China has nothing. But, unfortunately, he's not doing that. And it looks like we have an SUV scout going around for uh, K-Dag's there. And he's bringing that scout back to his base for some reason. Refinery going down. So he's going to be able to get some gas now. Layer tech... Uh, and an infestation pit, as well as a Banley nest for uh, K Dags. That SUV is going to get killed by no, it's just gonna chill there. Um, and then the infestor marine pops out and kills it. That's funny. I think China thought that the infestor was able to attack units, which it obviously is not. He does have that spine crawler right at the left side of his base, though, so that. Was, the SUV was just out of range. More Marines coming out for K Digs as well as an engineering base, so he's going to be able to get some missile turrets up or uh, get some upgrades for his Marines. Roaches and a, f a f few roaster ro roasters, a few roaches and an infestor out for China. So pretty, I mean, pretty even forces. I think that K Digs definitely could push out right now and win the game. Um, sorry, I didn't have the tabs up. So he, he is getting a uh, Glial reconstitution, and uh, K Diggs is getting weapons one, which is surprising. I didn't know that uh, they would upgrade their units. To be completely honest, and Ultralist Cavern going in at the top of his base, K Diggs is not going to see this coming, and he and it looks like China's moving his forces around. He should scout though, because he do doesn't know exactly what kind of units that K Digs has. A sensory tower, and I like this move because then he's going to be able to see those forces coming in. Sensory tower up for K Digs. So I really feel if K Digs moved in here, he would be able to win the game. You have an ultralist out now, and now that the ultralist out, everything changes because ultralists just tear through. Um, they just tear through marines, and I'm going to slow this down a little bit here. And so we have a group of marines coming up into the main here, and another group of marines going to the natural. And this is a really good move. He's going to try to take out this bailing nest. Uh, the forces of China are coming in here. They're going to be able to clean this up really well, especially because of that like area effect damage of those ultralists. And that force gets cleaned up very fastly. Although this natural, it looks like it's going to go down. He needs to send his forces down there. His forces are coming in, but I don't think it's going to be in time. And yes, it looks like that hatchery does go down. So really good cost effective. Well, I don't know if it's cost effective. Nah, probably not cost effective actually, uh, since hatcheries are only 300 minerals. But I guess a good attack by K Days, especially because China is not going to be countering at the moment. Uh, speeding up the game again. And going to the APM tab, we have an average of 9 and 15 APM. So uh, you can definitely tell that these players are new to StarCraft, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, let's go to the income tab. And about, about the same income, a little bit more gas coming in from China. But uh, 14 harvesters and 10 harvesters is kind of funny. Resource count. Uh, China has a ton more resources than K Digs does. K Digs is doing a little bit more, a little bit better of a job using his minerals at least. Oh, no. Well, now they're about, you know, they go up and down. But both of them are not utilizing their gas very well at all. Um, see the unit composition, just simply Marines for K Digs right there. Go back to the production tab. Anyways, it looks like a roach is going to be scouting a little bit. Maybe using that Zelnaga Watchtower. No, it's going to pull back and uh, do a little bit more scouting. Hive was obviously down before. I don't know why I was so excited about that. <laughs> obviously, it was down because of the Ultralist Cavern. Anyways, 
um, infestation pit. So not a lot going down, just more ultralist being morphed. And I think now K Diggs is in a little bit of a predicament because he does not have the unit composition to defeat this. He is pumping out a ton of marines, though. Unfortunately, only two of those marines can be built at a time. Also building some marauders. If we look at the units tab, no. What do I want to look at? Mm, production? No. Army. Army, that's what I want to look at. So, um, K Diggs is at 37 of 43, and the Zerg player China is at 48 of 58, which is, I guess, where you want to be because Zerg wants you want a little bit more. Um, you know, units than the Terran. Although the Harvesters is about the same, which is really surprising because Terran should have a lot more Harvesters. But, um, so yeah, we have 12, 12 to 14, so just a few more. Not a lot. Anyways, Ghost Academy now down, as well as a factory going down for K Diggs. It looks like he might be trying to expand there. Nope, just gonna <laughs> to find a few of those minerals. Uh, he's getting Cloak and the uh, Mobius reactor. So he's going to be able to have a lot, a bit more energy when those ghosts first pop out. China, meanwhile, has rebuilt his hatchery and is mining there. So he, his income is going to boost up dramatically, especially because the limited harvesters that both these players have. And now Aspire down for China as well. So he's going to be able to probably pop out Mutalis, maybe going to go some Corruptor. But I'm, I'm thinking that he's going to go Mutalis. A lot of idle SCVs out for... K Diggs here, but he has a pretty good unit composition, although these Ultralists are just going to be able to run right through those uh, bi bi bio units he's got there. If he got a few more uh, well, Ghosts, or like, he just needs higher tech units like Siege Tanks and um, Thors, stuff like that. He is g getting his natural though, which is a good thing. Uh, he's going to be able to catch up to China very quickly, especially if he sends, you know, transfers his SCVs there. And I'm going to go times four now, and Extractor going down at the natural for China, as well as a ton of Overlords right there. Oh, that's funny. Um, so Mutalis, yeah, so Mutalis out now for China, and he looks like he's about ready to attack here. He is attacking the Supply Depot, going to do some harassment, going to pick off one SCV, picks off another SCV, a third SCV, a fourth SCV, a fifth SCV, a sixth SCV. Oh man. This is really bad. And then that roach has 11 kills. Oh my gosh. Finally, these forces come in and kill it. And, uh, wow, that was a really devastating attack for run one roach. A lot of bio units out for K Dags here. But at the same time, you know, Ultralists. Ultralists are Ultralists. And even though everyone complained about them getting nerfed during the beta, uh, you know, they're still ridiculously strong, especially because they have that, uh, that like area effect damage so a little it looks like a ghost